Michigan women's basketball coach Kim Barnes Rico. Coach, good morning. Good morning, Sam. Glad to be glad to have you with us once again, Coach. And boy, uh, you know, we talked to you late in the week last week after some after some tough matchups, and uh, you know, knew you were going to have a a a, a bounce back game. Uh, against the team that you beat earlier in the season. It's always tough to see them the second time around. And and you knew Northwestern was going to be game in your pink game, and they were, and you lost a, a heartbreaking nail-biter at home against the uh, the Wildcats on Saturday. Kind of take us through that one. Yeah, that was a difficult game, and we knew it was going to be extremely difficult. We were coming off of a really tough stretch of five games in a short period of time and traveling a lot and being on the road. And, um we felt really good about Northwestern having them at home and the first time being at home in, in a couple of games. So we were excited about that. We came out super strong, um, and we're, we were playing really well for the majority of the game. Uh, Saish Gori got in foul trouble again, and that's kind of been a common theme in the last couple of games. And when she went to the bench, um, we were up 10, 11, 12 points in the second half, and um, they were able to make a run. Um, she got back in the game and kind of went back and forth down the stretch and we had opportunities to, um, seal it at the end and we just didn't finish it. So it was a really tough game for us. I think their first lead might've been the, Mm -hmm. the basket that ended the game. Um, but it was a tough, a tough game for us, but sometimes you need those kind of games to learn and to grow and to get better and, um, you know, it's kind of been a tough stretch for our kids because we've been so close. Um, but I think it's going to pay off. And, and you know, we always talk about how it's about the, the process and the journey. And we're getting better and we're learning a lot of things um, through it. So I think it's going to pay off um, as the season progresses. And, yeah, Coach, you, you mentioned that they, you know, the, their first lead of the game, their only lead of the game was with four seconds left to go in the game. So, you know, those are those are the breaks sometime. But the, the lesson in the end as you said, uh, you know, be able to close out games. And we, we talked to Coach Beeline about that with with the guys. They've had some tight games uh, of late. I know it's tough to to get, you know, to t- kind of get on that horse at the end of a disappointing game. But uh, kind of take me through, kind of take me through that that. And then also, you know, it was one of those contests, Coach, where it, it just wasn't, you know, in the second half especially offensively, Coach. It was one of those games where you just couldn't couldn't find your way offensively was was it was it a defensive adjustment or was that just was that just uh you guys on 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 your side of the the floor I think so much and especially with young kids is confidence and we've been in that situation a couple of times now and it kind of hasn't gone our way so I think our kids are feeling a tremendous amount of pressure I know it may sound silly but we come out really super strong and then when teams start to make a run on us we get real tight Mm -hmm. and real nervous and um, you know we miss some shots that we make in the first half and it's happened a bunch of times to us and and all we can do is just keep working on experience and being in those situations and try to put them in those situations in practice and, and try to get better at them each and every single day. But I think really, you know, our conf- our confidence is wavering a little bit and we're getting tight and we're feeling a little bit of pressure. I mean, down the stretch, we had four free throws um, for a chance to seal the game with one of our best free throw shooters on the line. And, mm. you know, you just feel at that point like it's going to be no problem. You know, mm-hmm. we make this we make these plays all the time. And, um, you know, we're just getting super tight and our confidence is, is low because we've been in the situation and haven't gotten the victory in, in a couple of games. But, but it will turn if we keep practicing and we keep grinding and we keep getting better at those things. Absolutely, Coach. Uh, you know, one of the great things about that game, even with it being a loss, is it was your pink game uh, and you were able to honor sur- survivors and then your dad and your stepmom were in town. Uh, your stepmom is a survivor of breast cancer. You know, just a, a real special opportunity uh, to to honor people that have that have been fighting a, a really really tough fight. Yeah, and, and I think that's one of the best thing about our team, and and really probably all the student athletes at the University of Michigan is is how much they give back. And we always talk about really appreciating the opportunities that you have. And after a basketball game like that, it is so devastating and you know you sometimes you feel like oh my goodness how, how am I going to get to tomorrow you know I missed a couple free throws 
and then you look in the stands or, or, or you know, we have dinner the night before with a group of women that have really um, suffered and have really gone through a tragedy when, when they've experienced breast cancer and just kind of what they have gone through and just to hear them speak and come and really share with our team gives us just such a great appreciation of what we have and the opportunities we have to play college basketball at such a great university and the academic, you know, um, opportunities that we have at the University of Michigan. So having, you know, we had a group of survivors come in on Friday night and have dinner with our team and really share their experience and really connect with them. And they seem so appreciative to us, but really it's truly us that are honored by what they've experienced. And they're an inspiration to all of us. They came to the game on Saturday and, and they announced our starting lineup and we kind of gave them a pink ball ball um to bring home and and just just the experience from both sides um it's something that we started you know when I first got here three years ago and that we will continue to do but it just gives our players and our staff a a great appreciation for how fortunate we are we're talking to Michigan women's basketball coach Kim Barnes Rico here on the Michigan Insider on Sports Talk 1050 WTKA online at WTK.com well great thing about your game coach is Hey, you, you you suffer a setback or maybe a few, and you have the opportunity to get right back on the floor, uh, and and try to get right back on the right track. So that's what the next game represents for you, as you guys are hosting Indiana tomorrow. So what about the what about the Hoosiers? What do they bring to the table? Well, Indiana is a, a young team um, with a lot of freshmen and sophomores, so they're kind of fearless. They shoot about twenty three as a half. Not even a game. Um, So, yeah, they're going to come out firing. So they've won some great games during the course of the year that they've made those shots, and then they've lost some games where they haven't made those shots. So, um, you know, it'll be a challenge. Our league has been an incredible challenge all year from top to bottom. And I I think you could see, you know, Michigan State uh, is one of the bottom teams in our league this year. They took Maryland um, right down to the wire last night, who's the undefeated number five team in our country. So I think that speaks to the depth of our league. Um, So Indiana is going to come in, you know, fired up, excited. And I, I think, you know, it's just a great opportunity for us to get back at it at home in front of our crowd, which is has been tremendous and really made a difference for us and, and try to put the last game behind us. But learn from it, but try to move forward. Uh, Coach, uh, you're going to play Minnesota uh, on Saturday, and then uh, you got Senior Day next Tuesday. And I, I mentioned those games because we're going to have to reschedule next Tuesday uh, with, a, with a game on that day. But I want to take this this time to kind of preview one thing, not those teams, but, but, but Senior Day. Um, you know, talk about these, you know, your three seniors. Saisha, Saisha, Shannon, and, and of course, Nicole, and, and what they've meant to you and your program. Uh, I have been so fortunate to um, be able to coach these three players during, during the last couple of years and just to watch their growth and their character and their leadership. And, and um, Nicole Elmblad, academic All-American last year, um, a candidate to receive that award again, 3.94 GPA, just one of the greatest kids ever. Um, great for a program, a great teammate, will do anything for her teammates, always puts the team first. You know, it's funny, she averaged 25 points a game in, in high school, and now she's averaging seven points a game her senior year, but that doesn't matter to her. If she gets a big rebound to help us win the game, if she guards the other team's best player, she just sacrifices for the team. She's a true, true Michigan kid. Um, Saisha Gori, I mean, everybody kind of knows her story. Just a tremendous, tremendous development over the course of her college career. Passionate about the game, incredible motor, averaging a double double from a kid who didn't play, you know, hardly a minute her freshman and sophomore season. So, a self made player, just an incredible story how hard she's worked to get where she is. And for younger kids, even for freshmen in our program that really don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, I mean, you can just look to someone like Saisha, who really just spent every summer in the gym, endless hours working on her game, got her body, changed her body, got in tremendous shape, and is now one of the best players in our league, if not the country. 
And then there's Shannon Smith, who, I mean, has another incredible, incredible story, you know, started at the University of North Carolina. Her dad and mom grew up in Michigan. Her dad was a big time player at Michigan State. And now, you know, her senior season had an opportunity to sweep state and beat them twice. And, you know, her dad's in the stands at Michigan State wearing the maize and blue. So really in- incredible. She's had a great season. I mean, leads our team almost in every category. Um, but they have really helped to keep our program and bring our program to a new level um, in, in women's basketball. And I, I want to thank them, and they will really be missed, and they have been great for our program. Well, but, but Coach, you can delay that missing them because you still have four games uh, left in the regular season heading into the Big Ten tournament, have that left, and then, you know, we'll see what shakes out after that, obviously based on how things go in these remaining games. So still – Definite, some definite opportunities to regain that early season, uh, mid-season momentum. So, Coach, uh, you know, good luck in these next few games, and we'll uh, we'll get it set up, and we'll talk to you again sometime next week. Thank you so much, Sam. Always great to talk to you. All 